Talos Incident Response Team. I am with a story from the field. I'm going to talk a little bit about ransomware, in particular the changes that have occurred with some of the tactics uh, regarding the use of ransomware. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the history too first, and, and then we'll talk about some strategy um, and some recommendations on decision making from a stakeholder perspective. So ransomware isn't new. Uh, of course it isn't new. It's been around for as long as there's been computers, right? There's been ransomware to some extent. Uh, obviously in the last decade or so, uh, ransomware has really taken off with the use of cryptocurrencies uh, in order to demand repayment for encrypted files, critical files on organizations hosts. An adversary deploys the ransomware, then they demand payment, um, and, and the organizations either choose or choose not to, to make that payment. So the maze operators, the, the uh, organizations or the, uh, the adversaries who operate the maze ransomware, uh, have started not just extorting money to decrypt files uh, that have been encrypted, because they're doing that, uh, but they're also, prior to encrypting the files, they are stealing data and then demanding payment to prevent disclosure of that data after it's been stolen. This obviously changes things a little bit, right? Because most organizations in the past, uh, you know, when they received ransomware and they lost their files, they would, you know, make that decision as to whether they didn't or didn't have to pay the ransom based on whether they could or couldn't recover the files themselves, right? Uh, it was a pretty straightforward decision tree. Uh, you know, can I recover it? Yes, then I'm not going to pay the ransomware author for decryption because I already have the data stored in backups or stored elsewhere. It's pretty easy, right? Or the data that was lost um, is old and inconsequential, so I don't really care. The next question is, is would we be, you know, what is the impact to our uh, corporate image if this data is posted online and disclosed? So, so let's talk about that a little bit, right? So uh, whether to pay or not to pay the ransom. In general, for normal ransomware, our recommendation would be to not pay it. And in, in fact, our recommendation would be is that uh, is to make sure that you have backups, good backups, and that you test those regularly to make sure that they work. This isn't an old recommendation, or this isn't a new recommendation, I should say. It's, it's, it's quite an old one. Um, and it's really one of the most important things you can do to prevent uh, yourself from being impacted by uh, ransomware negatively uh, to any significant extent, right? You you want to be able to get to the point that you can successfully recover from ransom without having to pay it. Uh, that that would be our typical recommendation. Now, with the maze ransomware, yeah, there's a little crinkle in there. It is a little different, but our recommendation generally stays the same. From the encryption perspective, uh, ideally, you should be recovering that, you should be capable of recovering that data uh, from your backups. You shouldn't need to pay the ransom authors uh, to do that recovery. You should already, you should be able to handle that in-house. The disclosure part of it does make things more complicated. However, I do want to make, you know, one thing clear is that uh, that disclosure has already occurred. By the fact that the data has been taken and stolen and is in possession of, uh, you know, is, is possessed by, um, by a third party, from a legal perspective, you likely already have to make certain um, notifications regarding the disclosure of data, depending on the sensitivity of the data. As, a, as an incident responder, my recommendation will always be to not pay the ransom, essentially no matter what, unless the risk of not paying it is uh, could result in your business closing, right? You always have to make the decision that's right for your business. Um, what I would say, though, is that... Uh, ransomware and cyber attacks are so common that, you know, unfortunately, the, the public is, is somewhat desensitized to it. And so deciding not or deciding to pay uh, the ransomware author, the maze ransomware authors to prevent them from disclosing on data they've stolen really doesn't shake out in the long run, right? The reality is, is you know, yeah, you know, when this data is publicly disclosed, uh, you know, there might be some public backlash temporarily to it. However, it will ultimately blow over. And, and many, much of the public sees, um, you know, sees the organizations that are targeted as for these attacks as victims themselves. And they rightfully should, right? Uh, if you're doing what you need to do to secure your network and you're, you have the right backups and you're implementing the right security controls and you fall victim, um, then, then oftentimes the public will 
will side with the uh, you know side with the organization that was that was targeted. And, you know, not all the time, right? And so it is a um, it's a difficult decision that you have to make. It's a business decision. You know, from an incident responder's perspective, the recommendation would be to not pay. Paying the ransomware authors encourages them to continue to engage in ransoming sorts of activities. Uh, it contributes negatively to society when you pay the ransomware. So, uh, you know, the recommendation there would be to not pay it. But I realize that, um, you know, every decision to pay or not to pay is a difficult business decision that, that must be made um, in collaboration with key stakeholders and, uh, you know, where possible with recommendations from third parties to include external counsel, internal general counsel, you know, the, your board of directors, uh, and so on.